In this course, you will be learning about the WIDA standards. I chose to include them because I believe they can be very helpful to you, not just ESL teachers. Now, if you look at this book, I know it can be overwhelming. It's about 400 pages long. As one of the writers, I know that we put a lot of good stuff in here, but it can be overwhelming. So in this presentation, I will walk you through key pages that can help you navigate this resource so it can be helpful to you. So we are going to look at the organization of uh, the pages and um, the standards framework. In front of you on this screen, you will see four components in the nested relationship from the broadest to the smallest. Understanding these components will help you see what the standards can offer as you teach your multilingual students. So it's actually on page in section two on page 23. Understanding these components will help you see what the standards can offer as you teach your multilingual learners. The broadest category is the standard that represents four main content areas, language for math, language for science, language for social studies, and language for language arts. This broadest level represents conceptual framing for language and content integration. When we teach language, we don't teach language as the end, but as a means to an end, which is disciplinary learning. The second level is key language uses, inform, explain, narrate, and argue. These help us focus instruction not on vocabulary, but on the purposes for language use. As we learn science, we learn to inform, to explain how or why things work, to narrate stories or experiences as we engage in learning, and to argue, which is to construct claims and provide evidence for our claims. The third level is language expectations. These come from key language uses and show what students need to do as they explain, inform, narrate, and argue. Language expectations are grouped by each key language use. The last level is proficiency level descriptors, which show a continuum of language development from levels one to six. The key component that we will be working with in this course is language expectations. You'll see an example of one on the next slide. And in your book, if you downloaded the PDF, it's on page 156. And I'm just showing you one example. This is from grade six, eight, and it's for language for science. And the key language use is explain, which is marked at the top of this graphic. And now the, the, you will see two sets of language expectations. There is a column with bullets on the left under the word interpretive and a column with bullets on the right under the term expressive. So again, language expectations are basically your goals for language learning in the discipline as students explain in science. Each set of language expectations will be different depending on the content area and on the key language use. Because as we explain, we do different things with language than when we narrate or persuade or inform. And you will also notice that the word interpretive in the WIDA standards framework represents ideas, uh, modalities for reading, listening, and viewing. So when students read, view, or listen to explanations, then they are doing these particular things and our instruction needs to support them to meet those expectations for reading, listening, and viewing, such as define questions or problems based on observations, information, or data about a phenomenon, determine central ideas in complex evidence, and evaluate scientific reasoning. This is for grade six, eight, just to repeat the context for these expectations. And then on the right is a set for expressive, and these are um, writing, speaking, and representing. So 
to support students to write explanations or to present their explanations, we need to support these language expectations. Describe valid and reliable evidence, establish neutral stance, develop reasoning, and, and summarize patterns in evidence. So in this course, when you design your unit, when you think about developing academic language, WIDA language expectations are going to come in very helpful to frame your language goals. So you can use them depending on what content area you're going to be, you are teaching in and you're going to be designing your unit for. And in the book, I'm going to show the book again, you will see that there are different sections here for grades uh, starting with kindergarten, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, and 9, 12. And each of these then will give you a set of language expectations depending on the grade level and content area. So I hope this was helpful and we will be engaging in more learning around language expectations as the course goes.